So basically I'm going to squeeze out the inside. I'm going to show you what I put on the inside of this and I'll show you how to tie it. What I have is a quarter ounce tungsten weight followed by some beads and then my hook is just an octopus hook. Okay, everybody, I want to talk to you a little bit about uh, uh, fishing tube jigs. Now, there's a lot of different ways to fish tube jigs, and I think one of the, the most common ways is to use a tube jig style hook with like a 60 degree bend. Now, typically what happens, you take that, that uh, jig head, slide it up inside, and expose that eye. And then, of course, tie that right to your leader. So you've got a a hook that looks just like this or a tube that looks just like that and that works very very good for a lot of conditions one thing I've always found is when you fish it like this because your line is connected kind of back behind the nose of the tube jig it has a tendency to swim kind of straight it'll dart off to one side or the other but uh, it's not really erratic in some cases that's good but I found a way to rig a tube jig that makes all the difference for me in the world, especially in conditions like we are today. We're fishing for uh, uh, big brown trout, rainbow trout up here in the Spinney Mountain Reservoir in Colorado. So what I do is actually I nose rig a tube jig. Let me show you how you do that. So basically I'm gonna squeeze out the inside. I'm gonna show you what I put on the inside of this and I'll show you how to tie it. But on the inside of that, what I have is a quarter ounce tungsten weight followed by some beads. The beads are no more than a spacer. And then my hook is a, just an octopus hook, like a size six, sometimes a size four regular octopus hook. But the key to this is that line goes right through the nose of the tube jig, comes down you run that line right through that tungsten worm weight, through the beads, and you tie the hook on. What I like about that is when you nose rig it like this, uh, and you pull that right up inside of the body of the tube, just like that, two things happen. First of all, because that line is going right in the nose, every time you just twitch it a little bit, this tube will dart off one way or the other. I go up, down, sideways, right, left. Uh, it's very erratic in the water, and it just seems to really get the fish's attention. The other thing I like about that, because I'm using these spacers, right there, those red spacers, the little beads, my hook now is clear at the back of the tentacles of that tube jig. That's really important because uh, oftentimes these fish are short strikers, and they'll come up and they'll grab the legs of that tube and they totally miss the hook. But by nose ring it, rigging it this way and using as many spacers, doesn't matter how many you use, depending on the size of tube jig you have, you just simply add more beads so that that hook comes back and it sits clear at the back of the tentacles of that tube jig and you miss a lot less fish. So next time you go to uh, fish a tube jig, try nose rigging that run the line right through the nose of the hook, through a quarter ounce or a 3 16 or whatever size uh, worm weight you want to get it down as deep as you need to go, followed with some bead spacers, and then a tie, uh, just a regular octopus hook on the back of that, and you have a deadly tube jig presentation right there. Pretty quick and easy. I'm Al Norker for Casking. Give the nose rig tube jig a, a try and I think uh, you're going to catch more fish.